Po. Semi-auto shotgun or pump shotgun. Maybe you're new to the shotgun shooting sports. Maybe you're just looking to get your first shotgun. So which one's better? Which one should you go with? If you're trying to figure out that question, you've come to the right place. Let's go. Before we get into this video, I want to give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, which is Vortex Optics. You might be wondering, why in the world would Vortex Optics sponsor a shotgun shooting tips video? I mean, don't they, after all, make optics? These don't go on shotguns. That is a valid point. But Vortex came to me and said, we want to help new shooters get started. We don't care if it involves Vortex or optics, anything like that. I think it's so cool that Vortex is involved and wants to see you be more successful regardless if it involves their products or not. But by the way, Vortex makes more than optics, they also make apparel. Some of my favorite apparel, like this Sun Slayer, I love their stuff. Check out Vortex Wear, link is in the description. Let's get to the video. So we're considering semi-auto versus pump shotgun, there's a lot of different considerations to look at to answer which one's best. And there's no absolute, this one's right, that one's wrong answer because it's really about what's gonna be the best choice for you with all the considerations. And we're gonna help you answer that question, so let's jump right into it. The first thing we're gonna look at is price of the shotgun. So there's no way around it. Pump shotguns have the lowest starting price point. This was my first pump shotgun. This is a Mossberg 500. Not only was it my first pump shotgun, this was my first shotgun. Primary reason I bought it was price. I could afford it. I was a poor college kid. Yes, I didn't get my first shotgun until I was in college. And this is what I went with. Now, many years later, I've shot a lot of different shotguns. I have a bunch here that I'm gonna show you, but I wanted to point out that if you're looking for rock bottom, just price is your biggest consideration, probably just eliminate semi-autos right off the bat. But with pump shotguns, there is a price range, like anything. So you've got the Mossberg 500, that's gonna be a cheaper one. You have the Winchester SXP. Now this is the trap model. There's a Black Shadow base model that has an MSRP of around 350 bucks. I wouldn't really consider spending anything less than that, ideally. Uh, the SXP is a great pump shotgun. One of my favorites as far as just all around budget value gun. SXP does a great job. Other options are like the Remington 870. This is an older version here. Probably slightly more than the Winchester SXP, more than the Mossberg 500. But there's a range, right? So you can get all the way up into some a little bit nicer shotguns like the Browning BPS. It's a really nice pump shotgun. It's bottom eject, which is kind of cool. But the MSRP of this gun is, I mean, it ranges from seven to $800, depending on the model that you go with exactly. There's different variations of the BPS. So with that in mind, you could spend seven, $800 on a pump shotgun, and you can also get into a great semi-auto for seven, $800. The Winchester SX4 is a great value line shotgun. I have shot the snot out of the Winchester SX4. MSRP is right around $800. Black Shadow is your cheapest option. If you got about $700 to spend and you wanna jump up to a semi-auto, this might be a great option for you. When you're looking at shotguns, you have three and you have three and a half inch chambers. Now, some people really like to shoot the three and a half inch Magnum loads because they goose hunt and they think that's what they need. But if price is a major consideration, absolutely scratch off three and a half inch. That's gonna add 100 to $150 to your bottom line not at all necessary. Actually, I don't even prefer three and a half inch. I love to shoot three inch guns. One all around versatility. If this is your first shotgun, you might shoot some clays, you might shoot some ducks, you might shoot some upland birds. Three inch is gonna give you great versatility. More than likely it's gonna work better when it comes to the semi-auto shotguns anyways, cycling the light target loads. That's not something you would necessarily deal with with the pump shotguns. But when you're talking semi-auto shotguns, sometimes those three and a half inch don't cycle the lighter two and three quarter inch target loads nearly as well. Plus, 
three and a half inch shells, the guns are more expensive and the ammo itself is more expensive. And I don't think it's necessary at all, but you might disagree and feel free to put it in the comments or not put it in the comments either way. <laughs> now coming all the way back to price. If price is your biggest consideration, just be careful here because sometimes you do get what you pay for. There's a wide range in price in shotguns. For a little bit more money, you can go to an inertia driven shotgun if that's important to you. The Franke Affinity 3 is a gun that I've really enjoyed shooting. Uh, just a little bit more money because it is inertia. But what you're going to have to ask yourself, is that little bit more money worth it to you? We're not going to debate gas versus inertia. The only thing I'm going to say is gas guns tend to have lighter recoil, which we'll talk about in a minute when it comes to recoil. So you get what you pay for, but there's always exceptions, right? You got the Browning Maxxis 2. I love this gun. This is a phenomenal gun. I love it in the hands. I love the rubber grips. It's pretty. It shoots well. $1,600 in that ballpark. Now I'm going to tell you a little secret. This gun and this gun are very similar as far as their internal working components. They're both great guns. I would prefer to shoot this one if they were the same price, but this is $1,600. This is seven to $800. So you can get a fantastic gun without spending a ton of money. You might want the $1,600 gun and I'm not gonna blame you, but we're talking about price. And if you're price sensitive, that's just a little clue right there that you can get great guns that don't necessarily break the bank. Okay, we've talked enough about price. I'm beating that to death. If price is the bottom line, stop this video, go get yourself a pump shotgun and move on with our lives. If you're a new shooter, and you're getting your first shotgun, you might not love the recoil. You might not even think anything of it, actually. A lot of people don't because they don't have a lot of comparison to go on. This Mossberg 500, like I mentioned, was my first shotgun. I enjoyed shooting it. I broke a lot of clays until I started shooting this SX4. Got a lot of rounds through this. One day I decided to go back to the Mossberg 500 and I shot it and I realized that's not fun. This gun kicks the crap out of me. Now I shot a few test shots here right before we got started. I didn't shoot much. When you start shooting volume and repetitively, you'll start to notice it. Let's just send a few rounds down range with this Mossberg 500. Not bad, we're shooting light target loads, right? But now let's shoot the Winchester SX4. This is a semi-auto. It is a gas driven gun, fairly light on the recoil. Now you maybe didn't notice anything just watching the video. You just saw both guns come back. I felt a tremendous difference both in my shoulder and in my face. If I'm gonna go out and shoot two, three, 10 boxes like I like to do, I would much prefer to shoot this when it comes to recoil. It's a much more enjoyable shooting experience. So consider that when you buy a gun or if you're buying a gun for a new shooter, maybe you're a parent, and you're like, hey, my kid's getting into shooting. Let's go find the cheapest thing we can find in the store and give him that. I would never let my son shoot this as his first gun unless he was like 18. My son's nine, he's just got into shooting. I went semi-auto. The reason I went semi-auto is because I wanna create a great shooting experience for him, but I went with a compact so it's gonna fit him better. And I went with the 20 gauge because he doesn't need to be shooting a 12 right now. And I love shooting 20 gauge myself. So just take those into consideration. The fourth item I wanna talk about is follow up shots. Now, as you can imagine, if you're running pump shotguns, you got two considerations with follow up shots. One, the added recoil. And number two, and probably the biggest thing is operating the shotgun. Because every time you pull the trigger, you have to go like that. You pull it back and you go forward. Your body is moving, the gun's moving. Follow-up shots are a lot more challenging. In fact, I think I'm gonna do a little test experiment right now. Let's grab some clays. I'm gonna throw out three clays. Let's put that to the test. This is not a gun I've had a lot of experience with. It's a Remington 870. I'm gonna go ahead and shoot this and then we're gonna put these clips side by side. And since I've been showing off the SX4, let's use a different gun. I'm gonna go Benelli Super Black Eagle 3. Let's see what the difference is on shooting three clay pigeons as fast as I can. That was not too shabby. But let's see what we can do with the SBE3 where I don't have to work the action. Let's see if I can get a little faster. Okay, let's put those side by side, see what the difference is. So 
So as we can see from the video, semi-auto is definitely faster, but is that difference a big deal? In a hunting scenario, yes and no. I mean, it was definitely a lot different for me to shoot those three clays. You're not gonna shoot that fast. Having to work that action and move things definitely threw me off. I can hear what some of you are saying already. You were shooting a cheap pump shotgun versus a $1,700 semi-auto. Yes, that is true. But I could have also taken my SX4, which I'm very familiar with, and shot that much faster. So I thought I'd pick up a new gun. It's not about dollar price point. It's about semi-auto versus pump. And you're generally gonna be able to shoot faster with quicker follow-up shots with the semi-auto shotgun. So I just wanna throw that out there. If that's something of value to you, take it into consideration. Next thing I wanna talk about is reliability of the shotguns. Now, in general, there's less that can go wrong on a pump shotgun. There's less parts to a pump shotgun. There's no gas systems, no inertia systems, but it's pretty negligible in my opinion. I have shot a lot of rounds through pump shotguns, a lot of rounds through semi-autos, tens of thousands through this without any major issues, any major hiccups. You can run them dirty, you can run them clean. At some point, semi-autos aren't gonna run as well when they get dirty though. But you shouldn't let any of your guns get to that point because they're gonna deteriorate. Metal's gonna rust, things are gonna happen. Don't let them get to that point. But if you wanna drag it through the mud and have a gun that shoots, semi-auto might have issues. And if you really wanna muscle through pumping a shotgun that's full of mud and gunk, you're gonna be able to do it. So to me, not a big consideration, but I wanted to throw it out there for you to consider. The last thing I wanna talk about, one of the biggest considerations is just, what are you gonna enjoy the most? Some people enjoy running pump action. They just enjoy the movement of running that action. If that's you, I totally get it. Go pump action, that's the right call. Some people really hate recoil and they're gonna enjoy shooting a semi-auto a lot more because it's got less recoil. So no matter how you slice it, think about what you're gonna enjoy the most, what makes the most sense for you. There is no right or wrong answer, but I would love to hear in the comments down below, what is your choice? Are you going pump? Are you going semi-auto and why? Also, I've started to make a series of videos called How to Shoot a Shotgun. And I'm looking at a lot of different aspects of shooting shotguns. I'll put that playlist right up here. So check that out. And I'd love to hear from you what other types of videos about how to shoot a shotgun would you like me to make? I'll be making a whole lot more coming up. So put those down in the comments. And remember, whether you're in life or in the field, it's only those shots that you're laser focused on that you're gonna hit. So live target focused. See ya.